So now all I have to do is drag and drop our cleared file into the software and I hit write. In this video, we're going to continue working on our side swiped Acura TSX where it sustained damage to the fender, both front and rear doors, and a rear quarter panel. First order of business was to put all of the metal back into its original shape, and I couldn't have done it without my trusted spotter tool. I got all of the metal straightened out real good. Then I went ahead and applied some body filler. And then got everything blocked out until it was straight as an arrow. Then I applied the primer to the entire side of the car. And this is basically where I've left off. So now since your memory is refreshed, let's go ahead and move on to the next step of our rebuild. So in today's video, we're going to swap out the roof airbag and also the seat airbag. This seat is going to get stitched up, but the main point of this video is going to be about what it takes to actually reprogram your airbag module. I've looked all over YouTube and just internet in general to see what it takes to reprogram the module but for some reason the information on that topic is very scarce most videos that you watch on that topic do not explain the whole process step by step they are very vague and most of them just advertise their own service so you'd have to send your module to them in order for them to reprogram it i guess it's a big trade secret that they don't want to give up but i've researched this enough to where i can show you step by step what needs to be done to get the airbag module reflashed so this way the SRS system would work just the way it's supposed to. As a result of the accident, the side airbag went off and pretty much ripped through the seam on the seat. And it actually did a little more damage than just that because uh, this area right here got ripped. But I'm pretty sure that my buddy can patch this up and make it look good again. Let's go ahead and get this seat unbolted and pulled so it could get repaired. So right here is the seat I just pulled out of the car. And this is the seat I got from the junkyard. Check this beauty out. Look at this fine Italian leather running all the way down. Thing's a work of art. Not really. The only reason I got this thing is because of its airbag that's right in here. And I only paid 50 bucks for this seat. If I were to buy the airbag by itself on eBay, it would have set me back about 100 bucks or so. So once I harvest the airbag out of it, the rest is going in the trash. Сделаешь? Это Акура. Акура, да. Тут немножко сложнее работать. Да, я тебе вот об этом как раз говорил, я когда первый ты мне вот тут делал, я сказал, что у меня здесь немного шов разошелся не, не по шву. Только сделаешь красивые хорошо. Ага. Нужно этот кусок менять еще. Ага, окей. А здесь все целенькое. Все просто РБ поменять и зашить. А этот кусок надо менять. Поменять, хорошо. Все. А меняется это я уже знаю. Тут распарывается, это все распарывается, делается капия. И опять же под нее обязательно под кожу тоненький поролончик, обшить ее и строчить. И тут обшить. И все, нет проблем. Делаем. Делаем такое. Влад is a pretty legit dude. He pretty much does it all bunch of uh, uh, interior work as far as the covering. So I think this is mid 70s Chevy and uh, he's doing 
the upholstery on the seat, just pretty much getting it all redone, freshing it all up. So the seat is getting stitched up and it will be ready for a pickup sometime tomorrow but in the meanwhile we got to replace that side roof airbag and also let's go ahead and get that airbag module reprogrammed in order to get to the side curtain airbags i have to drop the headliner or at least one side of it in this case both upper roof handles and the sun visor have to go next the plastic covers for the a pillar b pillar and the c pillar also have to be pulled. As I pull down on a headliner, I try to see what other parts of the headliner aren't budging. That's usually an indicator that there is a clip or two that I possibly missed. And it's usually a safe bet to assume that there are a couple of bolts hiding behind the dome light cover. There are generally around 10 bolts that hold the roof airbag in place. So normally once you get the airbag unbolted, and unplugged it'll come right out and now you basically just repeat the process in reverse get the airbag bolted in push the headliner back up replace all the trim and you're done couldn't be simpler so the driver's seat that would normally be here is obviously out airbag that's inside of a seat is unplugged but for testing purposes I will use this plug with a correct value resistor. I will get this plug plugged in. So right now, as far as the car is concerned, the seat is in and the airbag in the seat is plugged in. So now with our airbag emulator in, I will go ahead and uh, turn on the ignition. So let's see, right here. The system went through its check and then the airbag light is still there. So let's go ahead and scan for SRS codes and see what kind of code we're going to come up with. Okay, let's go into the airbag, the SRS menu. Okay, left side airbag deployed. Now, when it says deployed, that means that there is a hard code stored within the airbag module and you cannot just simply go to erase. You want to erase? Sure, yes. It's erasing. Erase request has been sent. Okay, all right, let's go back. Oh, what do you know? This uh, code is still there. That means we cannot use any sort of a code reader to uh, erase this code. The only way to do so would be to actually physically remove the airbag module and reprogram the chip on which the crash data is stored. In most cars, the SRS module is stored somewhere under the center console or under the dashboard. And usually if it's under the dashboard, it would be tucked away in that area right there, just to the right of the gas pedal. In most cases, you would have to remove the entire center console, which is a pain in the butt. The easiest SRS module access that I've ever seen in any of the cars is in my Mazda Speed 3, where you literally, all you gotta do is just uh, pull out the cup holder and the module is stored right below it. It literally takes no time to get to it. Thankfully, in this Acura, we don't have to remove the center console. I gotta pop this cover off. And the module is located right there. 
Now, if you guys are not sure where your SRS module is located, you can always Google it. I'm sure there's gonna be a wealth of information online and you'll be able to find the location with ease. The module is generally being held in by two to four bolts. So the way to find out which one of the chips on a circuit board that you'll be working with is you put the part number of your module into your web browser then i would normally just go into images and uh, well one of the first ones that we come up with okay so this is our number right here and as we're scrolling down this is the same module opened up so just to double check we would look at the module that we're working on and if the layout is exactly the same meaning that all of the components are in same exact places then we take a look here we got this EEPROM chip right here with a bunch of probes attached to the legs. That basically tells me that this is the chip that we would be working with. Another way to tell which chip you'll be working with is if you scroll back up, then right here, once again you see the part number that corresponds with this, and that number will be stamped on the chip that the memory is written to. So that's the number we have to look for on this particular chip. So these probes are specifically made to work on chips with tiny legs like these ones or these ones. And for some reason that makes them real expensive. The set of small eight probes can run anywhere between 150 bucks and $250. So I have to figure out a different way to hook onto this chip. There's always gonna be a part number stamped on each one of these chips but a lot of times it's hard to see it, especially on the smaller chips, because there is some sort of a clear coat that covers all of these chips. You can actually see how glossy that one is, and actually the entire board is covered in this stuff. So what you gotta do is get yourself a Q-tip, get some of that acetone or lacquer thinner on the tip of the Q-tip, and start working all around the chip until you get that finish off. And I already just did that, so if you look close, you can actually see how the area around is glossy, but the area right on the chip is more on a dull side. And now you can actually start seeing some numbers. So the number I got is 564RQ. Actually, this chip number is 95640, and I don't know why, but for some reason they left the first and the last number out. Because more often than not, your memory is going to be written to either one of these little eight leg chips or one of the skinnier eight legs chips such as this one. So the number on the chip that we're looking for is 95640. And if you look at any of these other chips, you will not see that number stamped on them. Therefore, we know that this is the right chip. And also, if you don't clean up the area around the chip, you will not be able to get that chip removed off the board. This chip is soldered onto the board, so I'm going to use a hot air station to melt the solder so I can get this chip removed. So this chip is really, really small. Normally, the chips that the memory is written to are quite a bit bigger. And in order to program one of these, all I gotta do is, I just gotta drop it into a socket such as this one, like so, and this thing is ready to be programmed. But I'm not aware of any sockets such as this one that would work for a chip as little as this one right here. So I went ahead and purchased this adapter. Let's open it up. So there's some assembly required to get this thing going. These pins will be soldered onto the underside of this little circuit board adapter. Now let's go ahead and assemble this thing. I'm going to put a little bit of flux on some of these points just to help with the adhesion. And now just a few dabs of solder to make the connections. A bit more flux and solder for the inside connections. And we are done. So after soldering the pins in, this is what we got. Now I can solder this little chip onto this board right here. So once again, I'm gonna put a little bit of flux on all of these contact points. And now follow that up with just a little bit of solder. 
And now everything is set to get this uh, chip soldered onto our test board. So this is the programmer that I'm using. So this is the software that came with my programmer. So uh, first thing we gotta do is, I'm gonna go to D, which is select device. And that's where we will tell the software which chip we're working with. And so as you remember from earlier, our chip number is 95640. So we have three options here. We'll just use the first one. Hit that, select, it's gonna, Okay, do its thing. Okay, we'll hit buffer and then we'll hit read. And look at that, it populated with a bunch of numbers. There's a lot of stuff here. Okay, let's go back to the top. If you look down here, and guess what? That comes back to our part number. Good, that means we got a good read. Somewhere within this long code is our crash data. So down here we got a bunch of zeros, and then these zeros actually produce a bunch of nothing. So this is just a dead area within the code. And then if we scroll back up, we see there's actually quite a bit of code that translates into code of right over here. So this could be the crash data, but I don't know. And I don't really need to know none of that. So what we gotta do is we have to save this file. So we go file, save as, and then let's go ahead and call it Acura Bad Dump. So it doesn't really matter what you call it. This is just for my own reference. And it's gonna get saved as a .bin, which is a binary file. And let's go ahead and save this file to the desktop. All right, so we got the file right here. So the next step would be to get this file cleaned. In order to get our dump with the crash data cleaned, we have to upload our file to one of the websites that offers the cleaning service. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first three websites that I came up on. First one is airbagtool.com. So once we arrive here, we go to airbag, and then you can either choose make and model of your vehicle, or what I'm going to do is I will paste my part number right in here, and that's how I'll do my search. Okay, here it is, we're gonna choose it. So on this page, we can see that this is a paid service. It costs 15 euros or about 18 to $20. Now let's upload the file that would need to be cleaned. Go browse. And here I will just search for the extension of BIN. And here is my file, AcuraBed Dump. So I will choose it. And then I go to clear crash data. So at this point, I will select my payment method, and later on, this website will ask you for the email address where once the payment clears, your cleaned file will be emailed to. Let's go ahead and look at the other website. This one is carprogonline.com. So same thing, airbags. And I'll do the same. I will paste the number in. Here it is, choose it. And here, the same service runs 10 euros, which is about, I don't know, 12 to $13. Same thing. Let's choose it. Cool, it actually shows that the crash data had been found within our file. Clear crash. So basically it brings you to the same process as the first website. Let's try the third service which is actually free, this website is called weboctopus.nl. On this site, we go to free services and airbag SRS crash data repair. So this is a free service, but they are a bit limited on the amount of dumps that are available on this website. There's no option for me to enter my part number, so I have to manually search for it. Acura make and model. I scroll all the way down to TSX. So the part number I'm looking for is 77960-TL0-A012-M1. But what I'm seeing here is an N1. And you know, just to make sure, I went ahead and Googled the N1 and I'm not coming up with anything. So that leads me to believe that there was a typo on the website when they put that N in there because everything I'm coming up with always has M at the end. 
So if we go back and look at all the other Acura part numbers, they all end with an M letter. If you look all the way up, this is the only N, so it's probably just a mistake on their part. I will go ahead and choose this part number. So I've already done this, but you guys would just enter your email address and follow the directions. So this right here is a cleared file that was emailed back to me, and I went ahead and renamed it to Acura Clean File, just once again for my own reference. So now all I gotta do is, I will drag and drop it right in here, and I gotta hit right. So now this clean file will totally override our bad file. That means that all of the information that is still needed to be within the file stays within the file, but all of the crash data gets overwritten or erased. Great, so everything is finalized and good to go. I'll get this chip out of the reader. All right, now let's go ahead and transfer this chip back into our module. If you guys are interested in the tools that I used, such as the chip programmer or the hot air station, I will leave the links to them in a description field under the video. So now I got this thing lined up in there pretty good. Just to make sure it's got better adhesion, I'm gonna put some flux on there. And I'll hit it with hot air one more time. And that will help the uh, solder flow just that much better. All right, that looks good. The very last step is to uh, clean some of that flux up with rubbing alcohol. And once again, I just put some rubbing alcohol on a uh, Q-tip. Just gonna work it all around. Alrighty, so this is what we ended up with. So the upholstery guy just called. He said that the seat is ready. So let's run out and get it. And here it is. Man, this guy did a great job. So this piece right here was originally here. And now we got a new piece of leather in place. And the stitching looks beautiful, just like OEM. He matched it up with a white thread to the original stitching. So this way you can't even tell it's ever been done. All right, so let's get this thing home. Okay. Vova, you see what? Pound it. So, fuck up. Now with the module and all of the airbags hooked up, it is safe to reconnect the battery. All right, the moment of truth. I'm about to turn the ignition on, but just to be on the safe side, I will go ahead and recline the driver's seat. Lean away just in case if something went wrong. I don't want this airbag going off in my face. All right, sure hope I've done everything right. This is a moment of truth. All right, it turned off. The system's reset. Another success. Everything turned out great, just as I hoped it would. And remember, there's always more than one way to do just about anything. This is just the way I chose to go about my repair. So in the next video, we're gonna get the whole side of the car painted, and there are a couple of bonuses that I'm gonna throw into that video as well. So in the meanwhile, if you guys liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be seeing you soon in the next video.